Good. Thank you, Dustin. Hi, everybody. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and, and good evening, uh, wherever you are in the world. I want to project my screen first. All right. I hope everybody can see the screen. Let me go to the next slide. All right. This talk is about uh, authoring tutorials in MakeCode. Uh, we will um, let's see the agenda first. So first, in my introduction, I'm I'm Abhijit. I'm a, a dev lead of the MakeCode team. I have Jacqueline in the chat, so she'll help answer any question in the chat. It's going to be hard for me to monitor both the chat and give this talk, so she's going to help me out in there. Uh, and I'm going to briefly talk about MicroBit and MakeCode in the beginning, like one minute intro. I'm assuming everybody who is in this talk knows about microbit and make code but just in case i'll give it a quick intro and i'm going to talk about what is a tutorial how to write a tutorial bunch of demos in between and once you write a tutorial and you know how to write a tutorial how do you host that in a github repo which is where our primary way uh, we serve all our content from and some more demo there At the end i'll have some pointers for resources let's go to the next slide for people who don't know microbit microbit is an awesome microcontroller which students can use to bring their creations to life right that's that's what it is it has it's packed with sensors um, it has five cross five leds accelerometer compass th uh, th thermometer tons of other sensors including pins the beautiful part of the microbit is it, you, you can think of anything and you can build out of it you think of a robot you can build out of it you want to think of a watering a plant when the humidity is low you can build that out of it um, i'm not going to sell anymore because i'm assuming everybody knows about microbit here so let's go to the next one so what is make code make code makes it easy to program microbit right it's a programming environment there are a lot of editors for microbit make code is one of them but it is free open source online you just need a web browser and you can program microbit on top of it right a couple of strengths of make code is it has a simulator it has a nice set of blocks uh, blocks are a way of programming where you, there is no syntax error but it has low bar and high ceiling so you can go to javascript or python and you can do uh, any complicated program you want right it's a full-fledged id in that sense let me open my browser and give you a quick demo Right. So this is a make code editor. As you can see, this is home screen. We get a bunch of content and you create a new project. You get in, you have a toolbox on the left, you have a workspace on the right. You can switch to JavaScript, Python, you can drag blocks in it. And in two seconds, I have a flashing heart program. It basically runs a heart and um, um, forever in a micro bit. And I can download into a hard uh, device and I can see a flashing hard in my device. I just downloaded this before this talk. So you can see it. That's it. That's the beauty of this editor. This is think it as a Visual Studio or Visual Studio code for kids or a professional ID for students, but it's browser based. So you don't need to install anything. And let's go to home screen. Home screen is about all the content. It has your projects and a bunch of tutorials and a lot of other stuff get back to our presentation. So my presentation is going to be switching between the demo and this continuously. So bear with me, it takes a couple of minutes to switch, a couple of seconds, I would say. So now I'll come back to, so what is a tutorial? Now I showed you an editor, right? Um, an editor is centered around programming your creation, but sometimes uh, students need hand holding, right? You want to, uh, teach a particular concept to the kid right it's a constrained environment uh, of content plus make code editor it's the content which drives the editor uh, and um, and you ask kids to do specific things there are a couple of reasons you would want to do this one you want a teacher to teach a particular concept and without any other distraction of other blocks or other things in the editor or you're an extension author right and you, you want to teach some particular you your extension to students, right? Because um, we don't have a, a by default bunch of things in our own editor, so you might want to build those things. There are a couple of scenarios, uh, maybe just fun. Sometimes you want to teach debugging things to students as well. I'm going to do a demo of a tutorial for people who don't know, right? So this is Flashing Heart is our number one tutorial. It's the first tutorial we recommend uh, students do if they're coming to our editor for the first time. So let's go to a blocks 
I'm doing a blocks tutorial now, but JavaScript or Python is very similar. Um, so when you enter this tutorial, first it gives a dialogue saying that what you're going to build. This is telling me we're going to build a flashing heart today, right? Say, okay. Gives you a hint how to build a flashing heart. It gives you an instruction at the top saying, place the show LEDs block in the forever block and draw a heart. And if you see, there are not any other blocks. There is just a single block and a forever block, right? I'm going to drag this. I'm going to try a draw and heart here. Hopefully it did it right. Yeah, that's in heart. Go to the next step. So let's place another show LEDs block. You leave it blank and draw what you like, or draw what you like. I'm going to re leave it blank. Uh, and if you see in the simulator on the left, you can see a flashing heart. Let's look at the hint and see, did I do it right? Yes, I did it right. Let's go to the next one. And asking me to look at the virtual micro bit, which I did already. The last one, download to the hardware, which I've also have done already. So I have a flashing heart right here. Done, right? This is like 15 minutes. You can have your first program working in your micro bit. Right? Uh, this is like a hello world for a kid. It can blink the LEDs in the micro bit within 15, 20 minutes. Beauty of the tutorial format is it constrains the environment completely so that you can, uh, a kid can be focused on what they're doing and the instructions are live in the edit. So let's go to the next step. So we, we kind of saw why you, why tutorial is a powerful tool. Um, now, as a person, as a teacher or an extension author, uh, or a parent, why would you want to build your own content, right? What, what's the need for it? Uh, as I've shown in the home screen, there are a lot of content already there. So you could just use the content tutorial, which is already there. However, the, assume you want to teach, a, teach your extension, which you've built, which in hardware you've built, and you want, and we don't have a tutorial for it. So you want to build that. That's one of the scenarios. Another is teacher really wants to teach a particular concept in a better way than we can do. Uh, and they are the experts knowing in their kids their, and their uh, shortcomings and their need for pedagogy, right? Uh, so they might want to build something special there. So maybe you want to just build it for fun. That is another, that, that's a perfectly valid reason to build content. So what do you need to build this kind of a tutorial content which is embedded in the editor? We made it so easy. You just need a browser and a link to our website called Tutorial Tool. And to have that, you need to learn the basics of Markdown syntax, and you'll be ready to go. I'm going to give a demo of it now from us, from stage zero, right? So let's let's and feel free to follow as I'm doing it. So I'm going to put the link to the site in the chat. So call Mirko.com tutorial tool. So, Oh, yeah, Jacqueline has already put that link in the chat, so we're all good to go. So let me not write anything. This is the tool. Uh, quick, brief intro of the tool. So basically, uh, it's picked to microbit as an editor. There is a content writing pane on the left hand side and our full editor on the right hand, right -hand side. One of the important things is there is a tutorial docs. You can click on the docs and it will take you all the things you need to know. But for today's talk, I'm going to just type it and see how it, easy it is. Let's go to the, uh, the way you write the tutorial is in a Markdown syntax. Um, Markdown looks like a scary thing, but it is really kind of an annotation you do in the text to tell the editor what to do, right? Um, first, we're going to just concentrate on the text and do four things. We're going to add steps. You're going to add some emojis because everybody likes emojis. we will add some GIF and we will show you how to change from a step to a dialogue kind of interface. This is what we're going to try in the beginning. It starts. All right, so the top level is, this is a top level heading, and this is usually title of your tutorial, and we call it Flashing Heart. Pretty long heading. Hold on, all right. The second level is steps, right? step one and step two and step three. And if you click on the run button, 
And you'll see on the right hand side, the whole editor changed into a tutorial kind of an interface. And you see the heading is at the top. This is your title of your tutorial. Okay, I'm going to increase the font. It's just it's easy. Uh, I think it's better. I hope this is better. Um, so you can see, um, I think I lost the title. Maybe I should do a little bit lower font. Let's make it bigger. Okay. Um, so you can see there are three steps one, two, and three. There's nothing in there because I haven't filled anything in there. So the step one is basically we're going to add some data in there. Let's try to add some data. Okay. Let's say uh, this is an introduction. Right, that's the first one. The step two, and this drag, okay, show LEDs. So the one we are going to, the tutorial we're going to build today is flashing hot. So the second step is draw show LEDs block and place it under the forever block. And the step three is drag another LEDs block. Place it under the first block. So I have three steps. And you can see there are three steps in, in, in the tutorial on the right hand side. So I've given instruction for three steps. So let's run it and see. So my first step comes in here. This is an introduction. Second step is telling me to do something, which is drag the show LEDs block under the forever block. And the third one is drag and show LEDs block and place it under the first block. So all three gets re reflected in my tutorial. Um, what did we want to do, right? That this is the first thing. We have top level macro and the second level macro. Top level macro is the title. Second level macro is the steps. Sometimes you don't show the top level macro if you don't have a space in the tutorial, but most of the time it comes at the top. Uh, now we want to add some emojis, right? That's, that's what we're trying to do. Let's add some emojis. Um, okay, and uh, I want to add some gifs as well in my thing. So I'm going to add some gifs. Um, these are not relevant for this tutorial, but I'm just trying it out. So let me add. I saw a gif um, emoji there. Okay, I, I'm going to show you one more thing, right? The first step is basically an introduction, right? So I don't want it to be as part of the step in the top bar. I do want to be part of the uh, full dialogue. So let me do show dialogue. These are kind of a macros which tells the editor, the edge show dialogue is a macro which tells the editor, go and show it as a dialogue instead of the step at the top. So let me run this. So now I got the dialogue on the right hand side, which is a top level dialogue with emojis and GIFs. This can be steps, but I've made it as a dialogue. Still have three steps, but when first one comes up as a dialogue, second one as a step, right? You can see the steps here, and the third one as another step. So we have three steps now, and we have an emoji and GIF in the top one. This is it for the text, right? You can do a rich kind of set of things with just these four things. You can have a dialogue, you can have emojis, and you can have GIFs, which explains what to do. And, and you can have a steps built up. You can have 10 steps tutorial or, or like a five step, whatever you want to. So you, you can control the full text using this. But this is lacking one of the things, right? Um, what I said in the thing is beauty of the tutorial is it reduces the toolbox. But if you see, my toolbox is full. There's all the things which is necessary. Let me zoom out a bit um, and show you this thing, right? So I want to filter it out. I want to tell it only use these blocks in this editor. Don't use any, give me any other blocks, right? Let's see how to do that. Let's go back to our 150% so you guys can see a bit more. All right. And let's try, let's go to our next slide. There are two things which are super important when you're displaying blocks or JavaScript. There's the block syntax, which you can use and specify what blocks to use. And you can highlight the text as well um, and say this block is important and show it is in the color of that category. I'll tell you what I mean. Right? Uh, I'll show you what I mean. Let's go back to this and say, 
blocks. I'm interested in the blocks only show LEDs, right? So, but I don't know what the, the Markdown, the important thing to note here, Markdown only accepts JavaScript. It doesn't accept blocks yet, right? But you can convert those JavaScript into blocks. Kind of important distinction. If you're writing this uh, uh, Markdown, you need to have some knowledge of JavaScript. If you have no knowledge, you can still, you can use the editor to get the JavaScript thing. For example, I'm interested in show LEDs block, right? Because I want kids to draw this, but I don't know JavaScript myself. Uh, but I'm teaching blocks, so I don't care at this point. But I can go to JavaScript and copy this code and put it on the blocks. So basically, I'm telling the editor to display only the blocks which are referenced here, which is forever and show LEDs. Let's run this, right? And let's reduce the zoom a bit so we know what we're doing. Now, if you see the box, the the toolbox is filtered out and you go to basic and there are just two blocks show LEDs in forever because that's what we specified here there's another advantage to, advantage to this which is if you go to the hint it gives me the hint by default because that's a snippet we wrote it here if you don't want this exact hint because you don't want to give the key there are macros like uh, explicit hints which you can go and look up so you can give a different hint uh, by default sometimes it's very useful you know, if the kids get stuck they can go to the Hint and find out the exact key. Now, if you don't want to do blocks and want to go to JavaScript, you can just switch this to JavaScript and you can run it. And now the whole editor switched to a JavaScript editor, Monaco, and I can draft this. That's that easy. Uh, but we're interested in blocks. Let's go back to blocks. And you can do Python too, very similarly. You can have a Python snippet and have a Python thing there if you want to teach Python. Um, so I have a filter blocks here, it's two blocks, I have a hint. But if you see the text at the top, it still says, uh, drag the show LEDs block and place it under the forever block, right? Um, the top text here still says that. Uh, I want the show LEDs to look like a block because it, it's kind of hard for kids to figure out what is English text and what is a block reference. So this is kind of powerful feature, which I've seen kids love it. So I'm going to type this out. So let me let me do this. So I basically say, this show LED specs, show it in the color, color of the basic. What this tells our editor is the show LED is, this, is the name of the block. So show it in the color of the basic category. Right. And I run this. Zoom out a bit. You can see at the top the show LEDs is basically shows up in a blue color, right? So it tells the kids that uh, show LEDs, you can go to the basic category and fetch it. In the future, we want to improve the show LEDs to show the exact block. So this this annotation um, or, or some other way of when you click on it, it shows the exact exact block. So we do want uh, this annotation to be there in the content so it's easy for kids to figure out so what you've done is you've written the text you have filtered out the blocks and you've shown the block color so it's everything is working pretty good till now um, so let's go back to our presentation so we did all this we did all the blocks too and there are a couple of interesting things which i want to point out too i'll, I'll give i'll show a sample program after this but Basically, you can add any extensions to this as well. You can have a package syntax and you can add an extension to this tutorial. You need to add a package syntax because you need to know which extension you're referring to. But as soon as you add it, we'll refer those extensions. In the diagram on the right, there's a turtle extension which is referenced to that. There's template and ghost blocks too. Template blocks basically uh, gives the sample code in the workspace. Uh, uh, and I'll show you what, what it means. And the ghost blocks adds few additional blocks into the toolbox. Uh, let, let's see what they mean. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to copy some code to show you quickly. And I'm going to. Sorry. So I've written one sample tutorial and I put it in the GitHub which uses extensions. So I'm going to copy right here. Uh, it has all the things I've just referenced. 
that's too big. Uh, so it has an introduction, it, it shows dialogue, everything is fine. Uh, but the end, it refers a micro turtle extension, right? This says fetch this extension. In this case, it is fetching the particular version of it, but you don't need this. Typically, it says refer a micro turtle extension. Once you specify this in the thing, you can fetch it, you can use that API namespace to refer those things. Now you can see there is template and ghost as well here, right? A template, what it adds is by default, it adds some of the blocks into the workspace when the tutorial is begun. For example, when I start this tutorial, you can see pen up is already in the workspace. So if I add another thing, pen up and down. These are logo turtle style APIs. Run it, I get two of them here. So you can have some starter code in the tutorial. The template is a very useful thing to do. Sometimes uh, the just the instructions are not sufficient. You want some starter code running in there, right? Uh, and this help helps you do that. Uh, I think I made a mistake, but I'm putting this down. It's capital. Let's try again. Yeah, that that works. A ghost is basically sometimes you want some uh, additional categories or additional blocks in the toolbox, but you are not referring referencing them anywhere in your blocks or template code. Uh, the scenario is something like this, right? You, your tutorial is teaching some set of blocks, but you do want to give students some additional challenge if they want to go beyond that. For example, in this case, it says show the function blocks. If the kids want to use functions, they can use functions, but otherwise functions are not used anywhere in this tutorial, right? Uh, what happens if I remove this? I'll just quickly show it to you again. So, okay. See, there is no function block here. So the ghost block basically gave an additional category and the functions, right? And you can use those blocks. Kids can use blocks, right? They're not referenced anywhere in the tutorial. They're not on the workspace on the right, but they add some additional blocks in the tutorial. That's kind of three things we talk now. Template, which builds some starter code in the workspace. Ghost adds some additional blocks into a toolbox package to refer any packages. At, at this point, we are done, right? Uh, we, we don't have, uh, only other thing we have to do now is go test with our students or our consumers, right? How do I test this? Now? So I, I can see all my code working on the right, but how do I share uh, with my students? There is a quick and dirty way to do it, which is I'm gonna show first, which is very easy for you to try out. You click on the share button on the right and it generates an URL. Right. And I can show you, I can paste the URL here. You can see live now that it's a live generated URL and you can try it. So if you go to the URL and paste it, it should load the tutorial right now. And it's basically telling the editor, load this particular tutorial tutorial from the share page. And my turtle tutorial is all working great. Right, everything, the default template box, there are additional blocks here, there are turtle APIs. Uh, people who don't know what extension is, I had a talk last year on the same live summit on extensions. So please go and watch this talk. It's extensions are basically blocks which are added to your toolbox and any third, anybody can write it. Uh, this, this year's talk is adding content into make code. So it's kind of a complimentary things. Right? So going ahead, so you can completely try it. There are a couple of disadvantages to this, right? One, this link is read-only. So if you want to change your content, you want to reshare it and resend the new link. And it can contain one tutorial at a time. So if you have 10 tutorials, you need to send 10 links to students and it becomes hard to manage. Going back to my presentation. So we did the first quick test in live site. So you get the tutorial one, right? Um, so now the real nice way to do is move all this content into GitHub, right? You wanna move all of them to GitHub repo. There are a couple of ways to do it. One, you fork an existing repo, the repo which I shared and then like a, a couple of minutes back, you can just fork it, put all your content in there and just uh, share that, right? That's one way. Another way is from scratch, you go to our editor. We have a first class GitHub integration in the editor and you can use that. I'm gonna demo that too. Uh, in a moment. Uh, tagging a release is important. 
then you test again your license and all kind of localization is supported so you can basically write your own localized localized content in the in the github repo and we'll load the correct one based on the user language so i'm going to show how to hold how to move this to github let's go to the editor so again i have the whole, whole content here i'm saying we control a control c i'm copying it i'm going to a new project i'm going to just do javascript because this is all javascript if you want, want to do github a github integration is supported for blocks but if you want to write the content, it, it's primarily you have to add a new file, and the file support is only in JavaScript. We expect the, we don't expect kids to do this, right? We expect the content author who is slightly higher knowledge um, to do this. So I'm in the editor. There's a plus sign there. I do a plus sign. I'll say title.md. Go ahead. Create a new file. See in the explorer. Explorer shows all the files in the project, including your dependencies, but you're just interested in this new MD file. I paste everything here. This is my content. As you notice, there is a GitHub button at the bottom. I'm going to click on it. I'm already logged into GitHub, but otherwise you'll get a login prompt and I'll say live demo. Microbit live demo. I named this repo as microbit live demo. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to click on that button. What is happening in the background is all this content from this project is going into GitHub. We are preparing a GitHub repository for you. And once it is done, we will get we will come back. So it takes a couple of minutes to do that. One of the important things I said was it's very important to tag the release. Uh, this is because uh, our backend fetches the latest stack. It doesn't fetch the latest check-in in the GitHub repo. Uh, it, this is nice for developers because you can keep doing changes and we will fetch the last known good tag which you've done so you have to do a release i'm going to do a release it's a click of a button here but you can do it in a github as well once you get the release done okay it's kind of done so if you see here there are small links here there's a share link i'm going to click on it it's going to give me the entire link to my this first two couple of things let's see our repo it's all real or is this all magic happening and i can want to share this repo too just for people to look at it so this is a repo we just created it's a brand new repo we created 33 seconds back and if you see there's a turtle.md and that has our content right and now we see how to load this repo in the live editor let's do i don't know that you can see at the top but basically we are lo loading this tutorial with the hash tutorial tag with the link to our exact github repo so if i click on this load my tutorial i'm going to share this link too for people to try see that this is live everything github repo is just created uh, and, and i could share with you and you you guys can basically use the github repo to launch the tutorial which i've just created uh, so within like 20, 30 minutes, I was able to create end-to-end. -end. The hardest part in all this thing is not the process, it's the content, right? Content some writing takes a while, uh, especially if you want to entice the kids with the interesting content, that takes some time. But process-wise, it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to repeat it. So we did a quick test in the live demo using share. The shares are not powerful feature because they are read-only and you can't change them. So ideally, you want to move your code to GitHub. Uh, we tag the release in the editor, but you can tag in the GitHub as well. We tested again with this format and then loaded the tutorial. You need to license and get tutorial approved. There are some benefits to that. And the full localization is supported, which I did not demo here, but it is completely supported. It's very similar to extension localization. Um, a bunch of tools. Tutorial tool is the most powerful one. You can look at the documentation. There are tons of macros to make your content nice looking. Um, so you can basically um, use these mac macros to produce a rich content. For example, there are activities macro. You can have multiple activities in a tutorial and those kind of things. Um, record blog is a good one to follow up new features we're adding into this. So we keep uh, uh, innovating in this space. Uh, tutorial authoring is fairly new. Uh, we've been we had extension authoring for a long time. 
So tutorial lesson is not perfect yet. There are still some of the things which might be hard for folks. So please, um, um, uh, please give us feedback. Uh, and make code blog is here. Uh, the link is here. Uh, I'll share the links at the end of it. That's pretty much it from my talk. So is there any particular questions? We have five minutes for the questions and these are the social handles. Please follow us and give us feedback. Um, I will be happy to take any feedback. Thank you. Thanks so much. What an incredible session. Uh, please use the chat. Um, thanks so much for sharing your knowledge and uh, the amazing new ways make codes responding to how classrooms and educators want to empower students. Yeah. Can we get the presentation link to the people? I think there are a couple of questions. How do they get the link, these links? Yeah, so the the recordings will be all shared uh, via YouTube, but expect communication from the foundation and the event organizers just in terms of accessing the content following uh, the conference. Yeah. Um, I could pick up any questions and I'm, I'm going to go through. I think Jacqueline yeah. answered most of those questions. Um, I'm happy to bring Jacqueline in, but we don't have a lot of time. I don't know if there's, if, if you're wanting to answer any questions, Jacqueline, um, through your camera, I just see you on my console here. And that's okay either way. Um, yeah, GIFs, you, you can point to any GIFs, right? I think that one of the questions was, uh, can I do GIFs? You, you can do GIFs, or usually it has to be hosted in GitHub, so there are size okay. limits uh, on the GIFs. Yeah, go ahead, Jacqueline. Yeah, so a couple of questions on the GIF that came up. One is Martine was asking how to author tutorials with extensions. So I've built a custom extension, and I want to build my tutorial. How do I do that? Uh, I touched up on it, but I didn't show completely. Uh, usually there's a package macro. I can quickly show that too. Uh, hold on. Oh, maybe I have present. There's a package macro, which I'm going to type it here. So you can use that and refer any package. So it's completely support, supported. Uh, if you see my one of the GitHub repos I've shared in this live demo, if you see that, that reference is a turtle package. So you can just follow that thing. Uh, once you refer the package uh, macro, you can use any APIs inside that in your content. So it's completely supported. That's a primary scenario we want to support as well. And then the second question Andrew was asking is, can you reference external um, files in your tutorial, like external PNGs, or do all the files have to be in the tutorial repo? You, you can refer external uh, things, but to get approved, typically it has to be in the thing because we have to make sure these are right things for students. Um, but to experiment, you can always refer any external uh, GIFs as well. And just to clarify, the benefit of getting approved is that you won't have like a little disclaimer on your tutorial saying this is not approved content. So, yeah, I mean, th these are students. We want to be sure that the content is right for them. Right. So. Great. I think that was all the open questions that I saw. Cool. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jacqueline and Dustin for all, all the help and monitoring the chat. Thanks so much.